Hey everyone, we're back here at the 6.5 Summit. It is the AI track. This is the biggie. This is the topic that's been on everybody's mind. We love all of our topics, by the way, equally. But in the world right now, there may not be anything that we're talking about more, especially in the tech industry, than AI. So I'm excited for the next session. Scott Tees, Lenovo, welcome to the 6.5 Summit. Welcome, nice to see you. Good to have you here. I don't always do a handshake, but you when someone has a, a great handshake, <laughs> I gotta take it. I gotta take it in real time. But I am really excited to have you here. Um, listen, you heard you heard how I opened this thing up. There really is not a topic right now. I don't think I've done more interviews, TVs, podcasts, written more articles in a short period of time about one topic yep. than AI. Let's just start there. Kind of. What are you seeing, feeling, hearing about this topic right now? So it's, you know, AI's been hot for a while. Internally for IT, it's been hot for a while, but the past year with ChatGPT and generative AI, I mean, even my father-in-law is asking me, what's going on with AI? How does this thing work? So it, you know, it's, it's changed. It's up-leveled the game quite a bit. Uh, for us, what we like seeing more than just the, the chatter is just seeing companies actually making the jump from I plan to do AI to actually putting it into production. That's what's been most exciting for us. Yeah, it's really interesting that you say that. Now, your 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 dad, father-in-law, yeah, father-in-law, great guy. How's he yeah. doing? Is he is he showing you his prompts? Well, he's just <laughs> he's just asking me a question. He's hearing about it every day on the news and like, what is this thing? What is it all about? And yeah, I got to tell you. I've started putting it into a lot of workflows, and it is really interesting. Mm. And by the way, it's very interesting to play with the different models all at the same time, but I'm having some of those same conversations. That's why I asked you, is it's like, you know, it's kind of like learning search all over again. You know, we oh. kind of learned how to do search, and then search evolved, and then we learned how to search better, and then over time, and then it's, we're seeing the same thing with prompt, like prompt yeah. engineer. And, and by the way, yeah. you're seeing that maybe a future job title, kids go to school, learn how to become prompt <laughs> engineers. I don't know, I don't know how that's going to all pen out in the it end. It definitely has, it's going to have an impact on a lot of different jobs in a good way, I think, for the most part, but it's going to change the way we go about doing things. Totally. And, yeah. and it could be doing things for a fraction of the cost, but it could also be doing ex, you know, exponentially more with the same right, resources, exactly. which is what I get really excited about. Now, Lenovo, you've been in this game for a long time. And again, we're kind of talking about the hype part of it in, in the beginning here, but there's a lot of picks and axes and shovels, and there's a lot of infrastructure work that needs to be done. And <clears throat> You know, there's been AI and ML and machine learning and analytics going for some time. Talk a little bit about kind of the recent, yeah. the history and the build up to this moment and what Lenovo is doing in this space. Yeah, so we've been at this for quite some time. Back in 2017, Lenovo made an announcement that we're going to invest $1.2 billion in AI. That was pretty early on the on the you know on this whole uh, theme here. So we've been using that funding to do some pretty amazing things. We built out a really broad portfolio. It started with our very first GPU base server that was AI specific back in 2018. We've opened up our AI center of discoveries, which is right behind you, Dan, actually one of them. Um, we released our first workstation that was AI ready, so developers could have an AI workstation next to their desk. Um, we invented the AI innovators program, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. So we've been doing a lot with that original funding, and we're not, we're not nearly done yet. We've got a lot more to do. Yeah, absolutely, and you keep saying portfolio, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drill yeah. down on that one a little bit here. Um, you have a fairly broad portfolio, and given the fact that the company is in services, it's in infrastructure, and it's in devices, yeah. you know, from your pocket to the to you know to all the way to the cloud, it's it's influential. Talk a little bit about the breadth of the AI portfolio at Lenovo. Yeah, so you know, AI is is pretty unique. the The amount of things that you can do with it varies drastically. I mean, you've got um, machine learning and deep learning that looks a lot like a supercomputer most likely going to reside in a data center. You've got inference things that are going to happen right there where the data is being manufactured or seen by camera in a, in a retail store on a manufacturing floor. We've got to be able to put that AI hardware right there in front of it. So this broad portfolio is all aimed at being able to bring the, a the AI itself to the data. We don't want to have to bring the data to the AI. We want to bring the AI right down to the data. And that's what you're seeing is the breadth of this portfolio is all designed to do. Absolutely, and you've got uh, something that Lenovo calls AI innovators, and it's something that's been pretty instrumental in terms of the company's growth and, and development, and it's not all, it has, you haven't been doing it all that long. I think yeah. it's Last not year. even quite a year yep. yet. Talk a little bit about the program and talk about you know, kind of how this program is helping drive real world enterprise use cases and how that partnership is really uh, set to fuel the growth of this business for Lenovo. Yeah, so we've got this amazing portfolio of products, 
hardware is not the only thing customers need, right? They, they, what our customers are looking for is a way to get bankable, like. Uh, results from the AI. What can I put in that I know is going to function, I know it's going to bring me business value? That's what the AI Innovators Program is all about. So what we've done is we've um, enlisted about 40 of these smaller ISV partners that bring really unique AI IP. We pair that with a lot of the goodness that Lenovo brings, our global footprint, our services, the hardware platform that we talked about, and we bring it to the customer almost as a turnkey capability. So if you're a retail, um, a store owner, like a, a grocery store chain, you're doing self-checkout, you want to make sure you're not having loss at self-checkout. We have solutions that are already proven in the market, ready to turn, you know, to turnkey and put in place. If you're a manufacturer and you want to do inventory optimization, we have that capability already built. So those 40 innovators that we've got in market today, what we're already building the program with, they've got about 150 different use cases that you can pick from, all are basically turnkey for the end user. And that, that's really the power of that program. So, so can I drill into that a little bit more? Yeah. Can you share any specific customers or maybe a few of the use cases that you know, you're seeing that A, this program really helped to incubate mm -hmm. and you know, outcomes? I mean, I think with all these kinds of partner programs, that's what people always want to see is, okay, good idea. Yeah. How's it manifesting? More work, more, more production, more, and of course for Lenovo, more dollars. Yeah, so what I like about what we're doing these AI innovators is we're bringing capabilities using AI to do things that I don't think people had thought about before. So you're a fast food restaurant chain. You've got food on a bar or, or fries in the fryer. You want to make sure that your customers are getting those things at the peak of freshness or that you're not running out. We have AI solutions that use cameras in the store to look at that, time the, time the fries have been there, or the time the beef with broccoli has been on the bar, or whatever, and make sure that it's fresh so your customers are always getting you know, the best food possible. That's, that's AI in action. We don't necessarily think about it as AI, but it's it's a great use case. You know, it's those kinds of things that we're seeing come to come to market with what we're doing. Yeah, I see a ton of uh, kind of retail, hospitality, uh, security in store, shrinkage. I mean, there's so yeah. many really great things that could be done with AI. And I do have to say, first of all, you do not want to eat the beef with broccoli if it's sat too long. <laughs> I'm just telling you from experience. Um, and to peak freshness on fries matters. It, it matters. It can be the difference time. between a, a long-term loyal customer or not. So Without a doubt, it's people a, come for the fries. It's small things, you yes, know, agreed. drive that net promoter score up, right? <laughs> so, um, another big thing that I've spent a lot of time um, over the last couple of years looking at has been sustainability. Oh, and yeah. I know Lenovo has made some big, uh, you know, net zero pledges and they've, they've published some interesting work, but there's an, there's an inflection between AI and sustainability that I think is really important. I don't know that people have really appreciated yet. Um, that's what you're looking at. Yeah. Talk a little bit about how AI and sustainability can be a force that can be you know, more successful when coupled together. Yeah, it's a complex topic, man. So Lenovo signed up for our own net zero commitments just this past year. Yep. So we, we, we really understand what it takes, what kind of changes have to happen in the business to get to those type of goals. Uh, you, you hear about how much power consumption is going on with these AI systems, all these GPU systems, and you think, is that going to be at odds with those net zero goals? And the answer is no, it doesn't have to be. I mean, the way you, the way you install these systems, the way you manage them, the way you operate them, how you cool them in the data center, those all have a big, big impact on the sustainability of that AI solution. So we're, doing, we're spending a lot of time on even the hardware side of our portfolio, making sure that we're running these GPUs with as little power as possible. Our Lenovo Neptune solutions, which are basically liquid cooling those GPUs, they can cut the power consumption from these solutions by about 40% at the data center level. So that's a huge, huge cut in power consumption. It means a lower power bill, but it also means less CO2 output because we're not having to generate all that power. A really good example of the focus that we've got on efficiency is something that comes off of something, a list called the Green 500. It's kind of a listing of the world's most energy efficient supercomputers. Last November, and again last week, Lenovo actually took the number one spot on that Green 500 list with one of our AI servers. It's basically a SR670 V2 with eight H100 GPUs in it. Not only did it make the top 500, which makes it one of the biggest supercomputers in the world, it's also the most energy efficient supercomputer out there. So you can build both high performance and energy efficiency in these systems. You know, AI as well, um, we can look at lots of possibilities of what's going to happen. We do a lot of that in, in HPC. Yep. We're using AI as well to look at the, the many variables that could come out of the decisions that we make today and what the future could look like due to that. Yeah, I think those are, those are some good use cases. And, and, and to be candid, the rapid onset of, of generative, mm -hmm has to be making people wonder. I know we're not asking a lot of questions yet, but we know that when someone 
pings ChatGPT or, or BARD or any of these large language models, it's using significantly more power than a regular search. Yeah, yeah. And on top of that, now we're democratizing it, we're making it available to everyone, and they're hitting this thing with you know, some fervor. Yeah, right. And yeah. so I've heard a stat, and I don't know that it's the exact, but let's just say roughly 1% of the world's energy yeah, is consumed by data center. Higher than that, we think it's 2%. Yeah. And I think with the onset yeah. of generative AI and, and it basically by democratizing and putting it in everyone's hand and pocket yeah. and, and on every device, and all the GPUs yeah. <laughs> that are being sold, there's no yeah. way that number's going to go down. Oh, it's, it's going to, absolutely. We're already seeing as one of the fastest growing consumers of electricity, the data center as yep. a whole. Yep. So you start adding these high power GPUs in, it's only going to get worse, unless we do something different. Yeah, so yeah. that obviously, everything from the way you optimize software to the way yep. you utilize systems to you know maybe switch on and off mm -hmm. something momentarily yep. because the vision lets you know, hey, there's no one here right now, we don't need to be running power. Yep. Little things like that could, you know, you aggregate it over millions of cameras or you know, thousands of, of, of workloads and all of a sudden it yeah. can really make a difference. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're at the beginning. So we're at the beginning, Dan, of this whole thing with AI. Right now we're brute forcing it. Um, and we're making amazing progress, but with that brute force, it's bringing a lot of power consumption. The key that we're doing for our customers right now is making sure that we're, we're running those GPUs as efficiently as we can at the data center level. How are they air conditioned? How are they cooling? What are we doing you know, to, to keep them from overheating? How much power does that take? Every watt of power that you can avoid using by turning things off, designing a better algorithm, they're all going to mean better sustainability for our customers, lower CO2 emissions. So corporate governance and sustainability are good, but another governance topic that's going to come up in a big way is the regulatory ethics and governance of AI. Yeah. Uh, we saw on Capitol Hill, you know, we saw OpenAI, Sam Altman, we've, we've heard a number of executives come. And it seems to be, there's a consensus that there needs to be something done. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem that there's enough consensus of what that is. And also knowing that we're still trying to regulate social media and generally just the internet. I do worry yeah. how much regulatory can handle. So then it comes back on the enterprises, the, the big tech companies, it comes yeah. on every company that's util utilizing it. But I'd love to just kind of get, what is the Lenovo sort of perspective on ethics and responsible AI? Yeah, so you know what, what Generative's doing is it's, it's making really powerful AI tools more attainable than ever before. Mm -hmm. And that, that's one of the interesting things. It brings up those dilemmas that you talked about. Um, because if you have a strong data like a data practice already in place, and you adopt AI, it's pretty easy to bolt AI into that. If you're new to all this, and you've got access to these super powerful tools, how you handle it, how you use it, is a big deal. So last year, Lenovo started up something we call the Ethical AI Committee. Um, it basically looks at everything within the entire corporation, whether it's a phone or a PC or a laptop or a server that uses AI. We make sure that that AI is, um, is fair, it's eth ethical, it's sustainable, it's secure, um, we want to make sure that it's re, re, uh, uh, explainable. Um, our, our goal is to make sure that whatever we're building in, whatever we're developing, um, is, is something that we want, we're happy to have out in the world. Now, what we found since then is that our customers are equally hungry for guidance on this ethical, you know, this ethical conversation. So, at the end of last year, we actually published the tenets of the Lenovo um, Ethical AI Group. And we, we shared that with everybody around the world. So, people can adopt those same practices to ensure as they, they're not developing it, but they're deploying the AI that they do it in an ethical and you know uh, proper fashion. Yeah, I, I think you hit it on the head. Is nothing uh, the democratization of large language models is interesting. I, I I would subscribe. My take is that the sort of open internet large language model business is kind of table stakes already. I agree. And so quickly. And so what ends up happening next is it comes down to every enterprise has to figure out how do they kind of create. You know, there's the, it's a bit of a waterfall, but it's like an agile waterfall. It's a tech thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. But you know, of you know, large, medium, small, micro, and, and obviously we all know that the, the largest models do create the ability to create smaller and smaller yep. and more accurate models. Yep. But it's going to come down to companies that have lots and lots of customer data. Um, and lots of lots of, you know, this creates governance issues. It, it creates data residency. <laughs> Sovereignty, yeah, security, privacy. Security, yeah, privacy. So yeah. in order to give that great customer experience, you're going to have to be able to access all that data in real time, anywhere it is. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And with all the global change, there's yeah. things everywhere different. Yeah. Europe's different than the U.S., different than yeah, Asia. Sovereign yep. cloud. Correct. And my yep. point though is, is that you know, the responsibility isn't just going to be on a open AI or mm -hmm. on a Google, because you, what they're doing actually seems somewhat straightforward to regulate. The yep. problem is, is then all that data, you know, we've seen companies that have people dumping stuff in or lawyers that are creating, trying to do lawsuits using data yeah. and they're getting inaccurate. These yeah, things right. kind of hallucinate. And by the way, they'll get better. They'll we'll keep get better. getting better because no we'll doubt. keep feeding it. Yep. it. You know, this is a self-fulfilling prophecy, but each company then creates something. Say you have a generative model for, you know, um, airlines, yep. you know, for helping people book the right flights and trips and, yeah. and you know, there's lots of personal data there or banking, mm -hmm. generative to say, hey, how to manage your finances? We're going to create a generative app that can, all of a sudden you've got lots of personal data, you've yeah. got lots of private data, you've got a lot of risk. And, and I think, you know, while we've gone been slow to deploy privacy laws, and this is a, just a great example, yeah. Scott, is we do have to be swift and I do think the tech industry is going to have to be very self-regulating. We, we have to lead here. There's no doubt whatsoever. Th this thing is changing so quickly and the, the potential peril if we do it improperly could have really negative impacts. Not, I mean, not only for the industry, but for society in general. So it's kind of on us to make sure that we're doing everything in an ethical fashion and sharing as much as we can. We, we, need, we need to be out there visibly leading this charge. We can't wait for the governments to do it. Absolutely, and I think the industry needs to come together and I'm already seeing a lot of progress there. And uh, it's Scott, I really appreciate you being part of this year's 6.5 Summit. Pleasure to be here, man. Thank you for having me. All right, everybody, we're here in the AI track. Stick with us, there's so much more here. If you want to check all of our different sessions out, they will all be available on demand. But for this session, it's time to say goodbye. Stay with us, we'll see you later. Mm -hmm.